Hi guys, thank you so much for watching. I'm Dr. Linda Kramer and today I've got a real ghost story for you. Now this is a story that happened to me personally and one of the big things that I must reiterate here is that no time during this experience did I pass out or lose consciousness. Bear with me because I'm losing my voice again. <clears throat> okay, so what happened? I was living on the north side of Brisbane back in the 1980s and one night I got really sick, a flu. So they called an ambulance and when the ambulance came, they took me over to the Redcliffe Hospital. Now, I've got some photos here, so let me share screen, okay, because I'm still not really up to, on board with what I do here. So here is the Redcliffe Hospital. Okay, now in the old days, back in the 1980s, you used to be able to just park right here down on the bottom floor, and they put me up on here on the third floor. So in my room, it was, an, it was a long corridor down the middle with rooms to the left and the right, which you can see here with the stairway. Okay, and in my room where I was, there was four beds and we're all facing two beds on either side or both facing each other with the windows at the end. Okay, so they put me in this room with three other ladies. And as you can tell, with us all being sick, I was not going to go to sleep that first night in hospital. So I was put into the hospital and I was sitting there for probably about an hour listening to this one lady snoring, thinking I'm never going to go to sleep. And a nurse walked past and as she looked in, she saw that I was awake and she came in and she said, how are you going, darling? You know, spoke, speaking nice to me. And, she, and I said, oh, look, I'm not going to be able to sleep because these three women are all making all this noise. It's my first night in hospital. I'm a bit apprehensive. So she sat on the bed next to me. And she said, oh, everything's going to be all right, you know. It's it's okay, you know, you, you've got good staff here. Everyone's going to look after you. And she really made me feel at ease. And she said, in the morning, if you like, you can go come out to me. I'm, at, I'm the matron and I've got the key to the staircase. So when you go into the external, internal staircase, so it's not the external one that you can see here, there was another internal staircase. And she said, come and get the key from me. And what happens is you go into the staircase, you go down a flight of stairs, turn around, go down again, turn around, go down again, turn around. And when you get to the bottom of that one, you've got to be really careful because the double step at the bottom, everyone trips on it. It's not just like one step. It's a double step. So it's a long step. And she said, if you go out through that door, out the back of the building, there's like a little cafeteria where you can buy magazines and any um, toiletries, etc., that you need. So what did this lady look like? She looked like a matron. So here I found a photo and it's this one here on the left. She had the collar folded over and she had this zip that came down. And she I even remember she had the white sand shoes on. So when she walked in, I even heard her step in on the tiles of the hospital. And I remember too, her hair was like Princess Margaret. So, you know, Princess Margaret and Princess Anne, how they have their hair in buns? This is how she had her hair, okay? So when she was looking at me, all her hair was back like this, okay? So she was lovely. And I said to her, but the problem is I've got a cannula in my hand and it was attached to a drip. So I had this stainless steel pole on wheels that I had to take like a buddy everywhere with me. And I said, so this is going to be a bit um, hard to get down the stairs to get to the cafeteria. And she said, oh, don't worry about it, darling. You'll be fine. Come out and see me in the morning. I'll give you the key and you'll, get, you'll be able to get down there. So I thought, wow, what a lovely lady. She got up off my bed. She walked out. She said, I've got other people to see now. Bye. It would have been about half an hour after that I went to sleep. So in the morning I woke up because the ladies in the room were waking up. And there was noises down the corridor. So, of course, I didn't sleep that much that night. But a nurse came in and she was holding her morning coffee. 
And she said, oh, how are you feeling? I said, I feel really good. That lady that sat with me last night, she was amazing. And she said, oh, yeah, yeah. And I said, yeah, she was the matron. Do you know her? She said, matron? We're not called matrons anymore. We're now called senior nurses. And I said, oh, that's a bit weird. Um, that Yeah, she called herself a matron. Maybe she's been here for a long time, yeah? And she said, what did this lady look like? So I explained the uniform because it wasn't the same uniforms that the ones we're wearing now. And I said, she, um, she had her hair pinned up like Princess Anne and Princess Margaret. And I said, she sat on my bed and we talked for about half an hour. And she told me about the staircase going down to the cafeteria with this double step. And this nurse is like, oh, oh. And I'm thinking, this is a weird reaction, you know. And I said, what's the matter? You know, you, you, you sound in a little bit weird. And she said, this is really weird. Do you mind if I just, just wait a minute? I've got to go outside. So I said, sure. And this nurse walked out. And she was gone for about five, ten minutes. And she comes back with this huge star photo covered in dust. She obviously got it out of a storage room or somewhere. And she says, out of all these people in this photo, can you pick the one who came and saw you yesterday? And I said, yeah, there she is right there. And I told her her name. And she said, oh, my God. She said, Okay, I've got to tell you this. The staircase that you told me is accurate. You get the key. We've got the key out there, but we don't call ourselves matrons anymore. We're now senior staff, senior nurses. She said, that key does open that doorway. You go down a flight of stairs. You've got to turn around, go down another flight of stairs, turn around, go down. And she said, the double step at the bottom is a doozy. Everybody traps on it. So you, how did you know that was right? And I said, because the nurse that was here last night told me about it. She said, Linda, that nurse couldn't have come and seen you last night because she died over six years ago in a car accident. What? What the heck? So she went out. She was pretty um, confused, <laughs> to put it like that. She laughed and taking that big star photo with her, and I sat on the bed and the other three were there. They didn't even talk to me, by the way. They would have heard. They would have heard it because we're all in close proximity, but they just did not want to know. And I sat there and I thought, what the heck just happened? And that's when it dawned on me. This woman was doing what she loved. She loved her job. She didn't scare me. She wasn't threatening me. She wasn't making me feel uneasy. She made me feel like a long-lost daughter who she was reassuring and making feel safe. Wow. So she was doing what she loved doing. And then we have to look too at how she died. She died suddenly in a car accident. Now, did she die going home from work or did she die going to work? Now, that's another situation there, and I don't know the facts there, but there is a probability that that's why she's back at this hospital because she was thinking about the hospital when she passed over. Now, you've got to remember what we think we create. So when, goes, when we die suddenly where it's unexpected, we don't realise we've died. And I explain this in my book, Ghosts Explained. So if you do want a copy of my book, Ghosts Explained, where I talk about why ghosts stay, why spirits go to heaven, because there's a big difference, ghosts and spirits. If you want to know educational stories, there's a few stories in my book. I've got real ghost photos in there, but they're not scary, okay? Um, come across to me, because I sell my books a lot cheaper. You can get them from me from just a gift, and the link is below if you do want my books, okay? But that's the story of the matron. It was a real story, and... She's probably still at Redcliffe Hospital now doing her rounds because it's what she was loving and passionate about. What an amazing woman, yeah? So there you go. Come along, subscribe if you like the story. Share this one with your friends if they need a little bit of hope at this point. And um, stay tuned because I've got more great videos coming soon. Thanks a lot and thanks for watching. Bye.